Hey guys, Lego Freak here, and today we're doing a special video because it was requested that I do an in-depth tutorial on trench coats and that sort of thing, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Uh, probably won't take too long, so yeah, but first, shout out time. So yeah, someone asked for a shout out, and the shout out today goes to Vented Fern 648 um, or 648, however you want to say it, but um, yep, there's your name up there. Uh, um, through the power of editing. Um, so, um, yeah, if you if you want to shout out, if anyone else wants to shout out, make sure to let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to put your name up here. But, um, yeah, so just wanted to say um, I've been working on a lot of the things that you guys are suggesting, and I love the suggestions. Keep them coming. Um, I've, I've been doing a lot of work, um, especially on the Arkham Knight figures, um, because I absolutely love working on them. So, yeah, there's quite a few from that. In fact, at the end of this video, I'll kind of give a list of the Arkham Knight figures that I'm going to be doing eventually. Um, there's a lot of them. So, um, yeah, but without further ado, let's get into it. I can't stop the gosh dang camera. You guys ever have that problem? You, the, it just won't, like, stop when you want it to. Yeah. So, first thing we need to cover is material. Now, the thing I usually use for my Lego trench coats, the thing that I find the best is, I don't know exactly what kind of material it is. Basically, this was a, a file at one point, you know, like, um, I'll kind of show you. I've, I've cut a lot out of it, but, um, yeah, so imagine that the holes were filled in, you know, with the little flat, it's, it was just a file that, you know, obviously opened up and that kind of thing. Um, I've cut a lot out, as you can see, but, um, yeah, I don't know what kind of material it is. Um, as far as, you know, the material goes, I wouldn't use printer paper. Um, I guess it would work okay, but it just, it get ripped easily, it kind of wrinkle and just tear really easily, um, which is not good. Um, this kind of material, basically, um, you want to kind of try and like bend it a little bit, you know, it's it's not like really, 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 you know, um, it's, it's just a lot uh, firmer than normal paper. Um, and another thing that might help is flick it. And depending on the kind of noise you hear, like, that's a pretty loud pop, if you hear that. Um, so, and it doesn't really wrinkle or ruin the paper much. Like, if you flick printer paper really hard, it's going to kind of mess it up a little bit. But this, you could flick for a while, and it won't really affect the paper. Now, I've just kind of cut out a little square here. Um, but, yeah, so you could pretty much use any material you, material you think is best. I would avoid using most, like, cloth material. And the reason for that is, like, when you cut it, um, I've noticed that, like, little threads start to pop up. Like, again, if it's cloth, obviously this isn't, but like um like most like you know um like rolls of cloth and stuff like that when you cut it there the threads start to kind of pop up and that just is really bad and doesn't look good and it kind of ruins the jacket so um i would stick with some kind of paper um card stock is really good index cards um if you find some firm index cards those are good but um yes yeah, so just kind of um just kind of look around uh your house or perhaps go to a store and just see what you can find Something not too thick, you know, but th thicker than printer paper. Um, so yeah, this is just what I use. I have tons of these files, just randomly, um, just old files that aren't being used. So I have quite a bit of this material to use. But um, yeah, so let's get into the actual coat thing tutorial. <laughs> so pretty much what I did to kind of make these was I kind of just freehanded, um, and this one's not very well done, obviously, but. Um, just this kind of this kind of shape here, and again, this one's not the best in the world, um, just because I kind of um, just kind of did it um, freehand. But um, pretty much, this is kind of the template that I start with. This is kind of what it looks like, and um, I'll go ahead and show you um, a random minifig. This is just an old beat up one. So that's kind of what you want. It's just kind of you know, it's, it's obviously quite big. It looks too big for it, but it actually fits really, really well. So yeah, pretty much, um, now to get this, you could either, you could freehand it, or um, if you buy um, a trench coat from like an online store, you could trace that. But you know, um, if you don't have one, obviously you could just, um, or you could look, um, you could Google image um, Lego trench coat template or something. I'm not sure if you'd actually find something kind of like this, but um, this is the one that I use um, for my figures. And again, you can kind of, um, while you're cutting it out, you can kind of fix it a little bit. The lines aren't perfect. Um, so yeah, so pretty much, I can't seem to find my scissors. Give me a second, oh, here we go, okay. Huh, they were where they're supposed to be. All right, so pretty much, um, I'm just gonna kind of cut this out here. Um, so, just 
kind of uh, do this here. Now, I, sorry if you can't really see it. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you out there can cut this out. I think, I believe in you. I believe most of you have the ability to cut this out. Just don't cut yourself. That is that is tip number one from, from an expert of cutting himself. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <gasps> I've had many, many, many accidents with exacto knives and things like that. Um, you guys are probably a lot less clumsy than me. All right, so you can kind of see now um, some of the lines I didn't cut exactly along it because, you know, this is straighter than the line was. So, you know, just kind of um, don't cut exactly on the lines, you know, try and make it straight. Um, but yeah, now um, for the holes, one second. All right. Um, basically, I just use a hole punch, um, and pretty much what I do is I line up the hole that I traced with the um, hole there, so you can kind of see, and just clip. Um, now, this is a really nice hole punch because it actually has this little, I don't know how many have it, but the little hole so you can actually see um, where you're going to punch it. So, right here, and boom. Um, and obviously, with thicker material, it's going to be harder to punch these holes in there, but... Um, yeah, that's the best way I found because the holes are just about the right size for a mini fake. Now, um, normally at this stage, um, um, in making the actual trench coat, I would either, um, if I'm not sure about how it would fit on the figure, I would kind of um, size it up. So I'm just going to take this random figure again. Um, and basically, just um, you want to put one hole on this arm right here. So kind of line it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you bend this side around and, well, and again, it's gonna be hard to do at first because it's stiff. So yeah, now pretty much just kind of fold it around like this. And then I kind of just, um, kind of make it, you know, kind of fit better. Just make the grooves a little bit more. All right, so. So now pretty much it kind of looks like this. So it's just about bent right, and uh, the holes line up pretty well um, on the arms, so I'm not worried about that. Then what I do is I fold in the front, and now you can kind of see it take shape. Now again, I kind of just, whoop, <laughs> I kind of just throw the minifigure across the desk. No, um, I kind of push um, on the front just to kind of reinforce, you know, where everything should be. Uh, push on the arms and just kind of squeeze it onto the figure. So, um... Now we have this kind of trench coat shape, which you can kind of see it's starting to form now. Now you can do a few things depending on the kind of trench coat you want. Um, usually at this stage, I know that it fits well, and so I would paint it, but since um, since I don't really need this coat, I'm not gonna paint it. But um, yeah, just for the tutorial sake, but obviously, you know, just get a paintbrush and paint it whatever color. Now I did find another thing about this particular kind of um, paper. Um, is that when I paint it, it really, really looks good. It like it holds the paint really well. Like for instance, my um, Rachel Ghoul from Arrow, his trench coat was made out of a playing card, and it doesn't hold the paint as well. The paint scrapes off a lot easier. So with this kind of paper, I found that the paint just works really well with it. Uh, so that's another thing you might want to kind of experiment with when you're looking for a material is how good the paint stays on it because um, I don't know. Not too many trench coats are in this yellowish white color. But um, yeah, so now, um, pretty much um, pretend it's painted. Pretend I did a beautiful paint job on this particular coat, or uh, um, trench coat here. So um, yeah, now uh, basically I'm just gonna cut the camera, grab some arms for this minifigure. I'll be right back. So um, basically I'll kind of line this up and I'll just insert the arms into the holes. All right, and then we'll do one more. All right, so now right now it looks kind of strange. It looks all right, actually. But um, what I usually do to make it look a little bit more realistic is I will take this corner um, and I will bend it just like that. And I'll push, and that's what it looks like. And then I'll do that with the other side. And again, the sides aren't usually even, and I don't actually want them to be because um, I don't know if I've said this in another video. I think I have. But it, with it being uneven, it kind of looks like an actual jacket. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what that looks like. Now you can kind of see it take shape. Oh, his legs are backwards. I didn't even notice. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's kind of what um, that looks like. Now for a little, um, now you could keep this part up, this little 
um, extra piece here, but what I like to do is I like to actually fold it down. I like to kind of push on it like this, kind of have it fold out to the side, and then I'll push down the back. Um, so I've, it's a little hard to see. Um, it's a little hard to do just because of the way that it's shaped, but um, I really think that it makes it look a bit more um, realistic. So I like to do that. Just give me a second. This trench coat is not, it's not, it's not happy with me. This trench coat is not my friend. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what I'm talking about, but um, yeah. So now, as you can see, that looks a bit more realistic. Looks like an actual trench coat now um, with this kind of thing um, folded back. Um, and I think it looks pretty good, um, except for this little fold here, but that doesn't usually happen just because this trench coat is just being picky. But again, you're going to have to play with it and kind of see um, what what you like, what you think looks good. Um, you know, you don't have to fold anything. You could just kind of keep it or just edit the design. Now, for the shorter jackets, usually um, I don't fold these quite so much. I fold them a little bit less so the triangles that stick out are a little bit smaller. And also I cut it, obviously, so that it's... Um, just about at the belt piece, um, which is how I make the smaller jackets usually. So let's go ahead and get a head on this minifigure. Let's just use a random red skull head. But um, yeah, you can kind of see now how the jackets are made. And again, um, having a good kind of jacket template is kind of really important. Um, so yeah, I would recommend like if you, if you uh, draw one that's really, really, really good, I would recommend that you just keep that around as, you know, kind of, um, just kind of a, kind of a guide type thing. Um, cause pretty much what I'll do is usually, um, I'll draw another one and, um, if it looks really good, I'll cut it out and then I'll just, um, when I make, when I want to make one, I'll just trace it and use that. Um, hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, or, um, when I'm making another one, basically if like, let's, Let's pretend this one came out really, really, really well. If I wanted to, I would take it off the minifigure, kind of spread it out, lay it on another piece of paper, and then trace it, and then put it back on the minifigure so um, that another coat would come out just as well or a little bit, maybe a little bit less than, you know, whichever one. But, um, yeah, because it's really hard to just freehand one every time, so I usually take it off a figure and just trace it. Um, onto a piece of paper, but yeah now for some detail. I usually um, just add some buttons or um, I'll do silver right here for like a zipper or something like that And another thing is you want the arms to match the color that you paint the trench coat obviously because um, If this trench coat was this color and his arms are black it'd be well I guess you know it could be a sleeveless one, but still um, but yeah, Just kind of play with it um, go ahead and like you know freehand one or find um, a template somewhere and try and make one They really 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 do help with minifigures. Um, this is the standard This is the one they use for the design I use for pretty much all of them um, Even the shorter ones. So I just cut it a little bit um, Just to make it you know obviously shorter, but yeah, I've used that on quite a few minifigs. I've used it on um, Gambit um, Minifigure I've used it on Nightcrawler um, I'm going to make a Nick Fury, and I'm going to put it on him as well. Um, and that's a gr it's a great addition to a Lego Nick Fury, um, if you have one of those. Um, I don't actually have a Lego, like, made Nick Fury. I'm going to have to make one myself. But, yeah, I've used this quite a Sorry bit. About that. My phone decided, hey, I'm going to spaz out now. Anyways, as I was saying, this is a great addition to uh, minifigs. Just, it's really, really, really cool. Uh, my phone is running out of memory, so I'm going to make this video well, pretty short. I'm just going to wrap it up. But, um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. And, um, yeah, that about wraps up this video. Right, well, that about wraps up um, this video. Hope it was helpful. And I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe. And, um, yeah, like, share, comment, all of that awesome stuff. Um, yeah, so now, um, quickly, because my phone is running out of memory, um, list of characters I'm doing from the Arkham Knight video game are obviously the Arkham Knight, um, Batman, Nightwing, Robin, Red Hood, Joker, Two-Face, Scarecrow, Killer Croc, and um, maybe Deathstroke. Um, so yeah, that's 10 figures um, that I count. So yeah, that's quite a bit. Um, I'm also working on other suggestions that you guys have given me. Um, so um, yeah, just there's a lot of suggestions. Keep them coming. I love the suggestions. Um, again, if you want a shout out, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to put your name in the corner of my room. Yeah, this has been Lego Freak. Peace.